as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. <laughs> It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And bang! On you, Hester! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Today is the day for a fire. Might be the slogan for an arsonist. But it happens to be a statement of fact. One fire every 20 seconds kills over 12,000 persons annually in this country. Don't give a fire a place to start in your home. More than 90% of fires in the home are through carelessness. A big factor around the house is the proper use of electricity. For the safety of your family and children, remember these four rules. One, don't use oversized fuses. 15 amperes is the size most household circuits require. Two, don't try to run too many appliances from one outlet. Three, keep electric cords and appliances in good repair and have those repairs made by a qualified electrician. Don't ever trust them to a home handyman. And four, when you buy electrical equipment, make sure it has passed laboratory tests for fire and shock safety. Guard against fire in your home by using electricity wisely and safely. This message is brought to you as a public service. Tommy Chatham had come to the Yukon with his father, Waldo Chatham, a rich mining expert whose company owned several gold mines in the territory. Although his father intended Tommy to follow in his footsteps and become a mining engineer, Tommy himself had other ideas. He was extremely fond of dogs, and while staying in Dawson City, he spent almost every spare moment of his time in the company of Scotty McCracken, a veteran dog trainer employed by the Northwest Mounted Police. One morning, he was talking to Scotty just outside the dog run in back of Tommy headquarters. You going to take those two new dogs out again today, Mr. McCracken? Aye, laddie, that I am. They'll need a wee bit more experience yet before they're really broken in the department. May I come along with you? Aye, you're welcome to come. Um, that is, if your dad will not have one. Oh, he won't mind it. At least I hope he won't. Oh, look, here comes Sergeant Preston. Mm. No, there's a man that really knows dogs. Hi, Sergeant Preston. Hello, Tommy. Hello, King, old fella. I wish I had a dog as nice as you. Uh, you will not find another dog like King in the whole North Country, Tommy. Not at any price. You seem to think quite an interest in dogs, Tommy. Got he been showing you how he trains, Huston, for sled work? Oh, yes, sir. Mr. McCracken is going to take me out on the trail today. He's breaking two new huskies into harness. The big Siberians? Aye. They're going to make a fine pair of sled dogs. Well, how about letting me hitch up the team? Hmm. <laughs> Go ahead, lad. Go ahead. Oh, boy. Hey, Tundra. Tundra. <laughs> 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 uh, he's got the makings of a real dog handler, that lad. Yes, the dog certainly acts as though they like him. Uh, look, Scotty. Uh, What's the matter, sir? Here comes the person we were talking about a little while ago. Uh, one of those Chatham? Yes, his father. In a bad part or two, if you look at his face. Oh, the lie. No, the lad in for it. Come, Chuck! Yes? Leave those dogs alone to come here. Okay, I said come here. Where's yes, for you, McNabb or uh, McKelly? My name is McCracken. Well, what if it is? And kindly keep your voice down. I am not hard of hearing. From now on, I don't want my boy hanging around your confounded kennels. Do you understand? And I'll thank you to remember the same thing, Sergeant. There's no law against a boy liking dogs. Well, there should be. Ever since we arrived in Yukon, it seems that all he can think about is dogs. 
He's dog crazy. That's what he is. Gosh, Dad, I was just hitching up a team. Mr. McCracken was going to take me out on the trail with him today while he breaks in a couple of new sled dogs. Yeah. Wouldn't you let me go with him, please? No, Pace Hunter, I wouldn't. Learning how to handle huskies is a useful accomplishment if you're expecting to spend any time up here. You're a puppy dog. He can hire other people to drive his dog sleds. Now then, young man, I'm giving you fair warning. Next time I catch you hanging around these kennels, I'm going to give you the worst thrash of your life. Now, is that clear? Yes, sir. Another thing, Sergeant, while I'm here, I'd like to lodge a complaint. Huh? Complaint about what? You know a man called Zip Bartley. Slightly. He owns a small mine on Squaw Creek. He did own it. Belongs to me now. How so? A few months ago, the mine appeared to be playing out, and Bartley was running into debt. So he sold the property to my company. Since then, we've struck a new vein. And now the mine is yielding rich deposits of ore. Well? Well, Bartley is furious because he sold out too soon. So he's spreading the story around that I swindled him and making all sorts of threats to get even with me. If you ask me, the man is half crazed. You know where I can find him? Well, from what I hear, he spends most of his time hanging around a place called the Sourdough Haven. All right, I'll have a talk with him. I'll do that, and the sooner the better. And as for you, young man, you're coming along with me. Goodbye, Sergeant Preston. Goodbye, Mr. McCracken. Bye, Tommy. So long, Randy. Oh, 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 oh. Bye, King. Dad, what did you mean when you said you were going to make a trip out of town? This is exactly what I said. There's been reports of a new gold strike up on the Peel River. I'm going up there with Fremont, my mining supervisor, to look things over. We'll be starting as soon as you can hire another dog musher. Am I going along with you? You certainly are. The trip will give you valuable field experience. And what's more, it'll keep you away from those confounded police kennels. When Waldo Chatham arrived back at the headquarters of his mining company, he called Fremont, the field supervisor, into his office. The clerk says you wanted to see him, Mr. Chatham. Yes, I do. It's about that trip up to the Peel River. How much longer is it going to take to hire another driver? Just hired a man a day, sir. Uh -huh. A fellow named Joe Lima. Rather a tough-looking customer, but I think he ought to be a good man on the trail. That's fine. How soon can we leave? I've made all the arrangements, sir. We can leave first thing in the morning. Excellent, excellent. At that same moment, the man called Joe Lima was entering the Sourdough's Haven, a combination cafe and hotel. He walked up to a table where a bearded, middle-aged man with deep-set, fiercely burning eyes was waiting for him. Well, how about it, Lima? Did they hire you? Oh, sure, Rocky. I got the job. Now, how about kicking through with that first payment you promised me? All right. Here you go. Five hundred dollars. There'll be a thousand more when the job's finished. Uh, thanks, Buckley. How soon are you starting out? We'll be leaving first thing in the morning. How many will be going along in the party? Uh, four altogether. Besides me, there'll be a guy named Fremont. He's the one that hired me. And there'll be Chatham himself and his young kid. How many sleds? Two. I'll drive one and Fremont will be driving the other. Chatham and the kid will drive. <laughs> good, good. We won't make a move till you get out in the wilderness. A good long ways from the nearest settlement. Well, here's the way we'll work it. I'll be trading along after you. As Zeb Bartley explained his scheme, his eyes glowed with a fanatical hatred. He was still talking earnestly when Joe Lima suddenly nudged his arm. Hey, hey, hold it a minute, Bartley. Huh? What's the matter? Here comes the money. Well, howdy, Sergeant. Hello, Zeb. You want to see me about something? Yes. I understand you've been making some threats against Waldo Chatham. I reckon I've cussed him out a bit. I'm talking about threats. Well, I'd like to break the dirty skunk's neck. I don't deny that. Swindle me out of my mind. That's what he did. According to Chatham, your mind seemed to be played out and you were running into debt. So you sold the mind to his company. Sure. He took advantage of the fact that I needed money. But he was smart, plenty smart. He knew all the time that the vein wasn't played out. Look, Zeb, selling the mine was your idea, not Chatham. Well, what difference has that made? Makes a lot of difference. You admit you offered the mine for sale and Chatham paid the price you asked. That's no swindle. It's a fair and honest business deal. Besides, you needed money at the time. What do you think you'd have done if Chatham hadn't been willing to buy the mine? That's my business. I don't know why you have to come poking your nose into this affair anyway. It's police business any time one man makes threats against another. What are you planning to do? Well, there's not much I can do, I reckon. What about those threats? Well, I was just talking, that's all. Well, you'd better tone down your talk. Otherwise, Chatham will have grounds for legal action against you. All right, all right. Come along, Tim. Hey, I don't like...
like the way he was talking to him. Uh, don't worry about him. Matter of fact, it's a good thing he showed up. How do you figure? When Preston leaves here, he'll go back and tell Chatham he's got nothing to worry about. That'll put Chatham off guard. But when he's out on the trail, he's going to find out he made a mighty big mistake. <laughs> We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, wouldn't the kids in your neighborhood wish they were in your shoes if you saw a baseball home run king in person and saw him smash a homer right out of the ballpark? Golly, nothing beats the fun at a ballpark. The game, the crowds, the hot dogs, peanuts, and soda pop. Come on, kids, come out to the ball game as guest of your favorite team. If you are 12 years or younger and can bring a paying adult like mom or dad, grab a pencil and paper quick to get a free baseball ticket, tear off a box top from a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice or Muppet shredded wheat. Send with your name and address to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Go often and see baseball's big hitters in person. For each ticket, send a box top from Quaker Puffed Wheat or Puffed Rice or Muffet Shredded Wheat. You get two free tickets with a guarantee seal from Quaker Paco 10. We'll give you the address now and again later in the program. Now write it down. Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Now to continue. When Waldo Chatham and his party left Dawson City and headed northeast toward the Peel River District, it didn't take long for Tommy to make friends with the Huskies. His favorite was Fremont's lead dog, a silver gray Malamute called Chicklu. On the second night out, Tommy watched with interest as Fremont prepared to feed his team. Mr. Fremont? Yes, Tommy. Would you please let me feed Chickaloo tonight? Feed Chickaloo? <laughs> say, you kind of like that dog, don't you? Oh, I'll say I do. He's not a very friendly dog, Tommy. He's inclined to snap at strangers. Tell you the truth, I don't think he'll take meat from anyone but me. Well, let me try just once. Yeah, well, all right. Here's a piece of caribou meat you can offer. Oh, thanks a lot. Here, Chickaloo. Careful now, Tom. Don't make any sudden moves or he might snap at you. Come on, Chicklu. Don't be scared. Here's a nice piece of meat just for you. Sure, that's a boy. I'm your friend, Chicklu. Here, take a bite. Well, I'll be happy. He's eating right out of your hand. Oh, sure, I knew he would. I thunder, Tommy. You must have a way with dogs. First time I've ever seen Chicklu make up to anyone but me. He sure is a fine dog. Oh, yeah, I... oh uh... Here comes your father. Confounded old Tommy. Tommy. Are you fooling with these dogs again? Oh, just feeding Chicklu. Yeah, stop feeding him. As I told you once before, I brought you up to the Yukon to learn the mining business. Not to play nursemaid to a bunch of mutts. Now on, let Fremont and Lima tend their own huskies. Do you understand? Yes. Dog crazy. That's your job. Dog crazy. The following day, back in Dawson City, Sergeant Preston was called into the office of Inspector Conrad at Mounted Police Headquarters. Sergeant, I just had word from the American authorities in Alaska to be on the lookout for a man named Joe Lima. What's he wanted for, sir? Attempted murder. Here's a circular on him that they sent me. Huh? Shows his picture. What? Inspector, I've seen this man. In Dawson? Yes, sir, at the Sourdough's Haven. He's talking to Zeb Bartley. Is he living there? Well, I'm not sure, sir. When I saw him, he was in the cafe downstairs. Well, you'd better get over there right away, Sergeant, and check up on him. If you find him, take him into custody. Right, sir. Come along, Jim. <laughs> when Sergeant Preston arrived at the Sourdough's Haven, he questioned the proprietor, Philo Sullivan. Sure, and I know Lima well. He was living here up till a couple of days ago, giving that crack on Zip Barkley. You mean they were rooming together? Yeah, that's right. They had a room upstairs. Any idea where Lima's gone? Well, now, let me see... He mentioned something about getting a job with the Chatham Mining Company. Chatham Mining Company? Tell me, is Bartley still here? No, he checked out, too. In fact, him and Lima left together. Stop to think of it. I remember Bartley loaded up his sled with supplies, as though he intended to leave town. Thanks, fellow. You've helped a lot. Come on, King. <laughs> Half an hour later, the sergeant reported back to Inspector Conrad. Any luck, Sergeant? I didn't find Lima, sir, but I found out where he's gone. He's left town? Yes, sir. He was hired as a dog musher by the Chatham Mining Company. 
clerk of the company office told me he headed out two days ago for the Peel River. Alone? No, sir. He and another employee were driving Waldo Chatham and his son. I'm afraid Lima may be up to something. What do you mean, Sergeant? Before Lima took this job, sir, he was rooming with Zeb Botley. Zeb Botley? The man who threatened Chatham's life. That's right, sir. When Lima checked out of the Sourdough's Haven, Botley left with him. In view of Lima's record, I'm wondering if the two of them may not be planning something against Chatham. It certainly sounds possible. Can you locate Botley? No, sir. When he left the Haven, his sled was loaded with supplies. Did you find out what route the party was taking to the Peel River? Yes, sir. I found out from the company clerk. You'd better leave right away, Sergeant. They have a two-day start on you, so you'll have to hit the trail hard. Right, sir. Let's go, King. <laughs> Day after day, the Chatham party continued mushing to the northeast until finally the last settlement had been left far behind. No one in the party except Joe Lima realized that the half-crazed miner, Zeb Bartley, was dogging their trail. One night after all the others had gone to sleep, Lima crept away from camp for a rendezvous with Bartley. Well, how about it, Bartley? We going far enough? Yeah. I reckon this is far enough for many settlements. Here, take this little bottle. Uh, what's in it? Knockout drops. Tomorrow night when they make camp, slip this into the coffee. And don't go drinking any of it yourself. <laughs> don't worry about that. As soon as they're dead to the world, give me a wolf howl as a signal. I'll come and join you. Right. On the morning after Lima had drugged that coffee, Tommy Chatham regained consciousness to find his father shaking him frantically. Tommy, wake up, Ian. Wake up, Jim. Hey. What's the matter? Hey, everything's a matter. Fremont and Lima are gone. We're all alone. We're stranded. Stranded? And all the supplies have been taken, too. The camp is cleaned out. That's awful. It's awful. It's a catastrophe. We'll starve to death out in this blasted wilderness. That is, if we don't freeze to death first. But don't get frightened now, son. Try, try to get a grip on yourself. You remember, getting in a panic won't do us any good. Well, I'm not getting in a panic, Dad. What about the sleds and dog here? Well, Lima's half pity has gone. Three months sled is still here, but his dog has been turned loose. Are the dogs still around? Two or three of them. They're skulking up beyond the edge of camp. If we can round up a team, maybe we can make it to back to the nearest settlement. No, no, it's no use. I've tried to call them, but the confronted much won't pay any attention to them. Well, let me try it. After pulling on the rest of his clothes, Tommy hurried to scout out the situation. He saw two of the huskies prowling nervously back and forth through the trees a short distance from camp. That one's Chick Lou. The other one's Jake. Hey, Chick Lou! Jake! Come on, you huskies! That's it, Chick Lou! Come on, fella! You too, Jake! In answer to Tommy's pleas, the huskies trotted obediently toward the camp. Oh, good dogs, I knew you'd come. Good old Chick Lou. How are you, Jake? Oh, Sunday, I don't understand it. They, they wouldn't come when I call them. It's because they know me better. Now listen, Dad. Jake's one of the wheel dogs. Yeah. He goes right next to the sled on the left-hand side. You go ahead and hitch him up. I'll go out with Chick Lou and try to round up the rest of the team. Well, all right. Come on, you Jake, or whatever your name is. Oh, oh, uh, take all of his collar, Jake. Yeah. Are, you, are you sure it's safe? Of course it's safe. He won't hurt you. Oh, that's it. All right, Chick Lou, come on. <laughs> We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. He took a mighty swing at that ball. It's down the right field line into the stands. Oh, it's all by a foot. But some boy is sure lucky he caught that ball. What a souvenir. Say, kids, wouldn't you like to be out at the ball game and maybe catch one of those balls? Golly, everything in a baseball game is fun. The crowds, the eats, the excitement. Come out to the ballpark as guest of your favorite team. Yes, see the game free if you are 12 years or younger. Just bring your mom or dad a paying adult. To get a free baseball ticket, send your name and address with a box top from Quaker Puffed Wheat or Quaker Puffed Rice or Muffet Shredded Wheat. Send to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Get as many tickets as you want. Details are on every ticket. For each ticket, send a box top from Quaker Puffed Wheat or Rice or Muffet Shredded Wheat. You get two tickets at one time with a guarantee seal from Quaker Paco Ten. Send to Baseball, Box 5205. Five, Chicago 77, Illinois. Send right away.
Half an hour later, Tommy returned with the rest of the team at his heels. He found his father still vainly trying to hitch up Jake. What's the matter, Dad? Oh, hell, he didn't bleed. He's going to harness one of these dogs. Oh, that's easy. I'll show you. It wasn't long before Tommy had the whole team hitched up and ready to start. Oh, send this sudden year of wonder. Well, they get on the sled and I'll get the team started. Well, maybe you'd better let me handle the team, Dad. Uh, well, maybe you're right. You all set, Dan? Oh, shit, sir. All right. Light him up, chick Come on, Mush! Mush! As Tommy and his father headed back in the direction of Dawson City, neither spoke the thoughts that were uppermost in their minds. They knew that it would take more than three days' travel to reach the nearest settlement, and that without food or matches, there was only a slim chance of reaching it safely. At that moment, far ahead of them, Bartley and Lima were preparing to dispose of Fremont. The latter was still unconscious from the effects of the drug. All right, get on time and dump him off right here. I still don't savvy why we had to haul him all this distance. Why didn't we leave him back there with the other two? Fremont's an old timer in the snow country. He knows how to take care of himself. If we left him back there, he might have rounded up the team and made it back to the nearest settlement. Mm, whereas left to themselves, Chatham and the kid will be helpless, is that it? Sure. Helpless as baby. Someone's coming along the trail. Holy mackerel. Come on, let's mush up that ridge. Stay out of sight yeah. let it go by. Mush it. Oh, mush it here. A short time later, peering down from their hiding place on the ridge, the two men saw the traveler passing along the trail below. I thunder it's a mountain. Not just a mountain. It's Sergeant Preston. I can tell by the big lead dog running ahead of the team. Hey, if he keeps on in the same direction, we will find Chatham and the kid. We'd better trail after him and find out what happens. And what about Fremont? We'll take him along with us. I have an idea. Such as what? If Preston does rescue Chatham and the kid, we'll have to get rid of the whole bunch of them. And we can make it look as though Fremont did it. Oh. We'll plug him to at close range so there'll be powder burns on the wound. And we'll put the gun in his hand with four bullets gone from the cylinder. Yeah, now I'm beginning to get it. When the bodies are found, it'll look as though Fremont went berserk, shot the others, and then turned the gun on himself. <laughs> My thunder, that's a mighty smart idea. Unaware that the crooks were following him, Sergeant Preston continued to mush northeast in pursuit of the Chatham party. Late that afternoon, he encountered Tommy and his father heading back toward the nearest settlement. After hearing their story, he built a campfire in a sheltered spot off the trail and cooked them a nourishing meal. When the meal was over, Waldo Chatham remarked, That's the best meal I've ever eaten in my life. Oh, yeah, same here. Glad well, you enjoyed it. Yes, sir, sir. I'd still like to know just what happened back there, Chad. Well, I don't think there's much mystery about it. Bartley paid Lima to drug you, leave you in the wilderness. But what about Fremont? They probably took him away and dumped him somewhere on the assumption that you'd be helpless without him. I didn't realize that Tommy here was so handy with dogs. Yeah, <coughs> yeah okay. I see what you mean. Hey, what's wrong with King, Sergeant? Look at the way his hair's bristling up. Must have caught a scent of some kind. I'd better investigate. It acts as though it's coming from that direction. The sergeant had taken just a few steps when his keen eyes detected a sudden movement on the hillside overlooking the camp. Someone's up there on the hill. Get down behind the sledge. The shots were all going wild, and the bullets seemed to be nearly spent as they plowed into the ground. Lucky for us you gave that warning, King. They started firing before they were close enough. Come on, boy. Where are you going, sergeant? Whoever's doing that shooting's up there among those trees. Going to try to flush them up. Moving cautiously between points of cover, the sergeant made his way bit by bit up the wooded hillside. When he had reached a point within effective range, he took careful aim and began firing. That took care of one of them, King. Go up and get the other boy. King needed no further instructions. He knew instinctively what his master wanted him to do. As the shots continued, he made his way silently up the slope, circling around among the trees. Suddenly, a scream of pain announced that the great dog had taken his quarry by surprise. Bringing up from his place of cover, the sergeant rushed up the slope. As he reached the scene, he saw Joe Lima struggling desperately with King, while Zeb Bartley lay sprawled out motionless on the ground. Help me, Matty! Don't let Zeb out! Get him away from me! I'll take your gun first. As the sergeant went to pick up Lima's gun, his back was turned to Zeb Bartley. At that moment, the half-crazed miner raised his head painfully. He started to roll into position for a shot at the Mountie. But Sergeant Preston heard the movement and whirled just in time. Oh, you don't! Oh, oh! 
Sorry, Bartley, but it's never a good idea to shoot a man in the back. All right, King, let the other one up now, boy. You two are under arrest in the name of the Crown. Later, when the sergeant had brought his prisoners down the hill and untied Fremont, who had been left lying on Bartley's sled a short distance away, Waldo Chatham remarked, Well, Sergeant, we certainly owe you a boat of shame. I'll tell the world we do. No need for that, but I'd certainly say that Tommy deserves some praise. You're right, Sergeant. Hey, Sandy, tell me I'm, I'm mighty proud of you. If it hadn't been for you, I'd probably still be stranded back here. Andy, from now on, you may spend as much time with dogs as you please. Oh, yeah. By the way, Fremont, how much will you take for that dog called Chickley? I won't take any price for him, Mr. Chatham. Huh? But Tommy can have him as a friend. What? Oh, thanks a lot. Hey, Chickley, did you hear that? From now on, you're going to be my dog. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, King, you've lost out, boy. From now on, Tommy will think Chickler is the finest dog in the world. <laughs> yes, fella, our work here is done. This case is closed. <laughs> Weekends are wonderful when you stay tuned to Mutual. Gay entertainment to suit every member of your family puts bright sparkle into your days of fun and relaxation. For anyone who likes quiz games, and that includes just about everyone, there's the kind you like where you can sit back and see how close the contestants come to the answer. There's music, too, of course, on Mutual's weekend schedule. Lowbrow or highbrow, you can take your choice. From full-scale productions of your favorite operas and operettas with all-star singing and dramatic casts, to swing your partner sessions of real old-fashioned barn dance jamboree. You can take your choice on Mutual. Your need for late news headlines from the field of sports, as well as on the national and international scene, is not neglected on the weekend either. Fifteen-minute roundups plus brief five-minute digests come your way regularly. Gather your family around this weekend and enjoy entertainment on Mutual where there's something for everyone. All heard every weekend over most of these stations. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. The delicious cereals shot from guns. <laughs> By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle. Produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. And directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. <laughs> This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America.